Well, now we're going to show you how to use all these things we've assembled, and we're going to show you the technique of doing the quill work. I just want to say before I start that quills are protein. They're like wool on a porcupine, and they are very subject to being eaten by moths. So just quickly, a word of warning, your porcupine quill baskets might be eaten with moths. So we are suggested to put a few moth balls in them. Now, to get on to the technique, we've now cut out our little pieces of birch bark. And one piece will be the piece we'll decorate and one piece will be the lining. Usually the lining is fairly thin and the piece for the decoration is thicker. And the first thing we have to do, of course, is to think of a design. Now, we're just thinking of something very simple for our first piece. We were thinking perhaps of doing something like a triangular shape and so that we could just make holes, and I'll just show you how to make the design on the top of the lid. The many, many ideas, if you go on the internet, and making stars and making shapes, and mostly you design them first, and then you get busy on your birch bark. So now Melissa's going to make the drawing on the piece of birch bark, and so it's going to be ready for us to start thinking about putting in the quills. And the quills we've chosen are the sort of middle-sized ones. When you look through the quills, you'll find some are quite thick and fat, and some are quite skinny, and some are broken. So before you start, it's a good idea just to select a little bunch to get ready with. And the way we put them into the bark is to make a little hole with a T-pin and push the T-pin through and you put a hole at the top and a hole at the bottom. And the quill is going to be poked in now in the top hole, and it's going to reach across and it's going to go down to the bottom hole. Now, if you were doing a big basket or something quite complicated, you would make lots of holes and do it all, but we just thought we'd show you just very quickly how to do them, because this is just an idea and a way of showing you how to do the technique. If they crack, you can soak them. And I haven't soaked these, so I, I hope they aren't going to crack. But you can, they can soak them in warm water if you want to, to make them less brittle. Now, I think we've got one now, and you can see how they go in. And now we're going to put the next one in. And you just nip them off just, just a little bit above where they've come through. There we are. And now we're going to make another two holes. So this, the way of doing this, it's very simple. And you just need to carefully make the holes and follow your line along. And then, of course, you have your quill. And sometimes you might have a very complicated basket. I've got this one here. I could just show you while Melissa's busily. See, this one has lots and lots of quills and it's completely covered with quills. So they would have made a lot of holes and they would have used a lot of quills. And that's another idea. But this is just a very simple way for us to show you how just to put in a couple of quills. You can get the idea. Sometimes you can fill a whole area in and sometimes you can just do an outline or do stars. While Melissa's doing that, I can show you this again, give you ideas for patterns. You can do little stars. You can do little things like butterflies. And of course, if it's a basket, you do a lot. This is just a very small little piece to show you how to do it. There. Isn't it fun? How's it doing? There, there we are. And then you just nip out. And don't forget that they, if you get a little one stuck in you, it makes a little barb. So there we are. And now we're going to, if, we, if we'd done all our design, and we would trim off thing, that, that is now ready. And probably we would make holes all the way around with our hole maker, because we're now going to stitch it together with the black linen thread. So we would go around all the top, making little, little, little sticks which these will now be where you poke your needle through. But it's really much easier if you make a hole 
and poke a needle through rather than if you have to make a hole with the needle. And then we will get, I usually for my sweet grass, if I'm using it, I would probably put it under warm water and just warm it. And as we would put our stitching in, I usually would just tack it with a few and not, not stitch it properly yet. I would just tack it round just to hold it in place. And then I would go around carefully making little stitches. And we would have the border. Now, if you would like to wear it like a medallion, you can just leave a little loop at one end. There, so you can hang it round your neck. And there you are. You've made your little porcupine quill medallion. Now, you can imagine, if you like doing this, you could do all sorts of lovely things. You can make bigger ones, you can make little baskets, and you can make a top of the basket. And then you could decorate round the, round the edge. And there's all sorts of possibilities. But there are lovely pictures on the internet. And this is just a guide to give you an idea how they get put together and enjoy for the rest of your life. So there we are. Thank you, Melissa. Melissa used her hands to show you, and I did the talking. So good luck, and I would love to hear if anybody has success.